Uh, yeah, I've been like still waiting. <laughs> I never left. I've always been here. I was here. I've still been because I knew we were going to reconnect. So I don't know how much of what was channeled through Tyann that you've gotten. Nothing. Um, if you can tell me where we le- where I left off. What was the last thing you hear- heard me say? Not a darn thing. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. I know. All right. Okay. So what I was saying to you, mom, you and Tyen was talking about the cabal and you guys asked me about my opinion. And I believe that's where we got cut off. Yes. I was telling you that there was five steps to your ascension. And I wanted to talk to you more about the parallel earth, which is the paradise timeline and how you were telling Tyann that you were scared of what you heard. But I wanted to let you know, that's kind of the reason why I didn't go deep into like the soul harvesting. That's what I was actually referring to, mom. I was referring to the cabal Mm -hmm. and how they capitalize and use your fear as energy, as food to feed the demiurge or the fallen, the fallen angels, fallen gods whatever you want to call it. But the first integration or the first step to your ascension is the integration. It doesn't mean that you're in acceptance or even condone what is being done, but you have. it is what it is, Mom. It is what it is. There's always been good. There's always been evil since the beginning of time. And it's not something that's only confined to the earthly plane as many have been told and lied to about. There's always been alien races at war. And it actually happens every 2,000 years. The earth goes through a cycle of ending out one phase of government and entering a new phase. So with the cabal, the children trafficking all of this is what's really behind the cv19 the cv19 was just a distraction so this is another reason why i've always told you to keep yourself in the highest vibrations which is a prerequisite but it's not the only thing that you need to focus on there's much more and i'll cover ground on that i'll get into that but first is the integration of your energies and knowing what you're up against with the dark controllers, AKA dark government, which there is a term that is used here, coining them as the J suits, but I don't want to overwhelm you with that. I just want you to be focused. Amanda, can you hear? Yes, I Are can. Can... Yes. Okay, I just I'm want just to take it all in. Time. Good. Okay, Jake, go ahead. Continue. Yeah. I, as I was saying, Mom, you have to um, go through five different stages to get to the paradise timeline which is the new earth that i was talking to you about that's parallel dimension within this earth there are vertical axes that are along the earth atmosphere which is known as the 3d matrix the reason why i had you focus on meditating is because eventually you're gonna know how to move out of your body into the astral plane. You do it every night when you go to sleep anyway. Everyone does. They travel out of their body and they go to different dimensions. And whatever work that you're supposed to be doing there is what you do when you call yourself being asleep. Like you got the third dimension, which is the 3D density, which is all physicality, it's all physical. 
And then you got the fourth dimension where you do the astral plane. Anybody can do it. it you don't have to be in fifth dimension. 5D is what you call it. You don't have to be there in order to astral travel, Mom. You can do that from the fourth dimension. Fourth dimension. But what I was saying to you on the other video is you have to push out your macabre. That is your light body. That's what you travel in. That's what protects you. Because anybody can be in 4D, Mom. Like, when I say anybody, I'm saying any being. It's like a frequency dial, and anyone can be on that station. So as a protection and a necessary precaution for you, always make sure that your macabre is pushed out, your light body. Okay. It's fully active. Surround yourself with light. There are a lot of heart-centered beings that are here in the earthly atmosphere. There's more benevolent beings than there are the dark controllers that are trying to impose on your free will, if you will. Trying to control the masses because most of the masses won't fight. They won't question. They'll just conform. And this is their agenda. It's human enslavement. Getting as much people to fear as possible to feed the lower entities because they've compromised their position with source and the only way that they can survive is by pulling from your light. This is the reason why I told you how to protect yourself. Because they pull from, <clears throat> which is known as the solar plexus. That's your power. That's where all of your power comes from, mom, is your solar plexus. And keeping your solar plexus protected, this allows them to steal from your power source. But they feed off of fear. You can make a declaration. A declaration of sovereignty as a sovereign being, because that's what you are. That you declare yourself a sovereign being. And that you only allow the light to surround you in your home, in your office, in your car, or whatever space that you choose to occupy and that you do not allow for the dark to come in. Because the only way that they can control you is if you allow them to control you. You have free will. There is a cosmic law and they cannot violate it. You had concerns about the micro-tripping and the vaccinations. Well, I'm here to put your mind at ease. A sovereign being, you do not have to accept and nor will you be controlled or forced. I already told you there are going to be people that are out of theater, are going to be willing to just hand them bodies, their bodies over as a sacrifice. I already told you that. Do you remember? Yes. It will get worse before it gets better, but it will get better. I already told you that as well. The third prerequisite, moving into the new paradise timeline, is mom, you have to stay heart-centered, unconditional love. And I don't believe you have a problem with that. You've always had a good heart. This is who you are. So I'm just only advising you to stay in that vibrational frequency because you will attract beings light beings, mom, you will attract them if you haven't already. And it's a good thing if you do, because they're able to give you downloads through your pineal gland. There are two ways of receiving from the spiritual realm 
that you may not be aware of. One is through the crown chakra, which is six feet, excuse me, six inches. It's kind of hard for me on this side. I forget that things are different. <laughs> it's six inches, mom, above your head. That is where your crown chakra is. And that's where you get most of your downloads from source. And then you also can get downloads telepathically through your pineal gland. Most of the benevolent beings that are heart-centered beings that will be coming to you will probably give you downloads that way, mom, through your pineal gland. They may either push your message through or they may just send it telepathically. When you're able to speak to these beings telepathically without moving your mouth, that's when you know that you're reaching a higher altitude in your ascension. And that's also how you and I, remember I told you a couple of transmissions ago that you and I will be speaking the same way. Yeah. Telepathically. <clears throat> yes. We'll be speaking telepathically because that's how we speak here. We don't speak like how Tyan now is moving her mouth. No. We speak only telepathically. And that's the way it was in the very beginning with mankind, with Adam and Eve. They didn't speak language. They spoke telepathically until the great fall. And so we're going back to Eden. We're going back to that paradise. And that is how everyone there will speak. Feelings will be known more than what they are now. Because a lot of times people hide the way that they feel. When you reach that level of the new earth, there's no sense of hiding the way you feel for it will be known and it will be felt on all levels of your being. Fourth thing that you do in order to get into the new timeline for the paradise is to help others to awaken. After you have settled within yourself and worked on your shadow self, which is at the core level, which is the first level, and that's the integration. When you go through the integration, you will also be purging. Allow it. Whatever wounds, whatever traumas that come up, do not stand in judgment of them, but embrace them. The good, the bad, the right, the wrong, the indifferent. Because that is helping you to upgrade your soul DNA, which has been compromised since you were born. It's been tempered with. And so now in your awakening, you're also awakening your soul DNA as well. And you're going through a rites of passage. And in this rites of passage, your soul is evolving. You're moving into becoming a more crystalline being, which is more angelic by nature and moving out of the carbon body into the crystalline body, which is what I have an ethereal body, an angelic body, one that is immortal, or as I told you the last time, eternal. We don't go by immortal here. Everything is eternal. Never dies. It's just a transference of energy from one state to the other. The fifth thing once you have helped to raise the consciousness of those that are around you, you too have to help them to also integrate. Of course, you can't do it for them. But by you continuing to stay in the highest form of vibration individually, you help those around you collectively. Does that make sense? Yep, absolutely. Hey, the 
Swift thing is the hardest one. That's why it's last. You have to overcome fear. Okay. Now, the way that you overcome fear is by staying heart-centered in love because love and fear cannot cohabitate the same space at the same time. So as long as you stay in that vibrational frequency, you'll be easier to transcend into the highest dimensions where you will be sustained in the new earth. That's it. Tayan has in her hand a raw malachite. She has no idea that I influenced her to buy it. Hmm. So I'll suggest that you buy it as well. Tayan will show you. Can you see? Nope, I don't see it. Can you see? No, it's down too far. You gotta hold it up. Oh, yeah. Ooh, that's pretty. Very, very high vibrational stone. And it's very important that you get it raw, unpolished, untampered with. Okay. This will keep you in your heart center. Meditate with it, Mom. Okay. Put it over your heart. And what it will do is not only open up your heart center, but it will also activate your high heart, mm -hmm. which is very important in order for you to sustain the love frequency and the love energy. Because love and the frequency of love is the entry. It is the key into the gateway of the new paradise timeline. You have to be in that frequency, which by the way, is the highest vibrational frequency there is. You can put it down, Dr. Tyan. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so with that being said, you have anything you have to ask me? I do. I have a few questions, but uh, the first one is from your, your cousin, Kelsey. I've, I have personally been working with Kelsey um, and sharing all of your messages with her. And I've been doing that because I feel like she's already opening up to this but um, she sent me this message this morning and I told her I would ask um, she said well I've never done a chakra chakra alignment slash soul awakening meditation and I am wondering if you can tell me about the heart chakra when I was going through it Everything felt harmonious until I reached the heart chakra. I felt intense pain in my chest the whole time. The alignment was taking place. And my throat got really hot when I got to the throat chakra. And my chest still hurts. So, I thought I would ask Jake about that. And I will be more than happy to answer that question for Kelsey. Kelsey has had a lot of heart trauma and a, a lot of wounds in many of her past lives. And so what she came across was a block. Her heart was blocked. And when she went into the meditation and it got to that place, that was a byproduct of what she hasn't dealt with in her previous lifetimes. As for the throat chakra and the burning, that's also blocked. So she's reached two blocks. And energy is very intelligent. When it gets to a block that's in the chakras, everybody responds and reacts differently. So this was her 
body's way of energetically letting her know that these are two areas, the heart and the throat chakra, that needs to be healed. So just tell her to allow for this to pass, and it will. It's not going to last forever. So she can receive her integrations. Because in the integration, there's the healing. The healing cannot take place until she's fully integrated and aligned. Which sounds like that's hap- that's what's happening. Yeah. Well, she... Tell her I'm so miss her. <laughs> Aww. Yeah. Well, she's going to be talking soon um, for her birthday coming up. I'm going to pay for a session. Uh, Man, I can't wait. Yeah. She wants to talk to you and to her grandma because her grandma passed and she was very, very, very close with her grandma. So. Yeah, yeah, he's agreeing. He's he's smiling. He just got the biggest smile on his beautiful face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he said he can't wait. He's looking forward to it. Yeah. So my question also is: in these five steps to ascension, um, I could work on these simultaneously at, at one time, like helping other people awaken. Yes. Okay. Okay. Please, please please do, even though, Mom, they're in steps. Realize that time is just linear. It's just only a human construct. Okay. Everything here is simultaneously happening. And it really, honestly, it's, it's happening there simultaneously, too. But because you are confined to your physical avatar, which you call the body. Yes. You don't really get a chance to see it. Mm -hmm. on a metaphysical level, which is beyond the physical, as much as you do physically, because that's what you signed up for. You signed up for the human experience, which is physical. Mm -hmm. But when you are doing these steps, you can do them simultaneously. You don't have to do step one, step two, step, you know, it's no specific order, just as long as you do it. And most of the people, mom, that you will be helping, you will find that, they may take, it may take them three days, it may take them three months, and to be honest, it can take some of them even three years. Yeah. But with you, you can do it all in one day, because that's where you are vibrationally. You're open and you're ready, and I feel that you can do it all, but it's not a race. I mean, right. whenever, you know what I'm saying? I do. It's not a race. You can do it at your own convenience, at your own pace, at your own time. Yes. But when you're in that paradise timeline, you'll know. You'll know the difference because the things that are happening around you in the 3D will no longer phase you. Yeah. It would just roll off of you like, you know, water rolls off a duck's back, mom. Yeah. You will find that you have more control over your emotions, which is energy, emotion. Because then you'll realize from a higher perspective instead of looking at things from the 3D. And that's how you'll know that you truly are in that paradise timeline. I'm already starting to feel that. Um, You know, the one emotion that I have is frustration. Um, and a lot of it is like, a, there's someone that I, I work with and talk to, and I don't think she's quite there. Like I'm there. Like, I don't think she understands on a spiritual level, but man, she can read psychically, uh, you know, or I feel like she could read psychically. Like, I feel like she knows things And that's frustrating because I'm like, how do you know that? And I don't know that, you know? (laughs) So that's one thing that I, I struggle with, you know, but I just keep going back and doing my thing, you know? Absolutely, mom. And you know what? Like I said, again, it's not a race. She is psychic, but the thing is you have more gifts and you have more talents than she does. And once you tap into that, the sky is not even the limit anymore. You have limitless 
potential. Well, I know that when uh, she works here at the office with me, and every, she, she senses Jake all the time. She's like, hi, Jake, all the time. <laughs> like, she knows when I, he's around. That's, I'm not there for her. I'm there for you. I know you are. <laughs> but she's yeah. like, uh, like yesterday when I was in the office, she's like, can you tell Jake to go back there with you? He's he's uh, <laughs> pestering me. And I'm like, well, that's his thing. He likes to pester. <laughs> I like to, I like to, you know, mom, you know how I, um, the more sensitive you are, the more I like to bother you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But here, here, you know, I've been, I've been around. Yeah. But I haven't been around as much as I usually be, you know, but I, I like her. I, I like, I like frustrating her. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I, I'm just, I, I'm still trying to understand her and her vibe and, and, and jive with her, you know, so, yeah. you know, I, uh, but I do like her a lot too. You like her? Yeah. 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 I, I think she has a really cool spirit. That's cool. Okay. And, you know, on this side, when I get someone that's receptive like that, it's kind of addictive. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's good. I know this, this kind of sounds like some like poster guy shit, but <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's really fun, and and she's I it think is. her name is Carrie, and I think she's um she's dealing with she sees all kinds of entities. She needs to learn how to protect herself. I think she was she's like, how do you protect yourself? And I tried to explain to her how to do it, but what she's describing to me, I think she's um running into some other spirits and the reason i'm saying this to you is because if if you're going to post that this on your site tyan dr tyan yeah well maybe yes. other people are having that maybe they're not right. helping the, you know maybe they're seeing spirits they shouldn't be seeing or talking to people because yeah. she's telling me that she has people uh following her and okay. uh, Things like that. So, I don't know. J Jake says she needs to... Okay, he's talking. Okay. This is Jake. Okay. She needs to raise her vibration. She needs to raise her vibration. Okay. She's not at her highest vibration, and she has a lot of fear. Okay. And I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to lie. It's not always me all the time that's poking around with her, but I do like messing with her. Cause yeah. Because she's... It's her spirit. She's open. Okay. She's she's open, but you know I, I'm not I'm not a bad spirit. I'm a good spirit. Yes, and um, I don't harass her or anything like that. But I do like making fun and, and joking with her because she's she's open to that. Yeah, she likes that. That's her personality. Um, yeah. yeah, she does. But that can also be her demise if she's like that with every spirit. I don't advise her to be like that to okay. be that open. Okay. And, 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 and not only does she attract, you know, benevolent beings like me, mom, she can attract any spirit like that. Yeah. So she needs some type of protection, like a crystal. I would say tectite. Tech, tech tectite is really good. Yeah. Or some black onyx. Or even hem hematite. Okay. That's something Michael the Archangel loves. And Michael is really good at protecting from benevol benevolent spirits. Okay. Any benevolent spirits can be around her when she has a hematite. Any of those stones will, will be good protective stones, okay. but I recommend the last one because that draws Michael to Archangel. Which one was that one? The tourmaline? That's, that's the hematite. H hematite? Okay, hematite. Yeah. Okay. That's what I recommend for her because she's cool. Man, I like her. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I do too. A lot. She, she's a good. She's a good soul, and she's very psychic. And like you said, she just doesn't know how to handle that power. Mom, mm -hmm. it's a lot of power to harness for one person. It is. It's not easy, you know. And even when I came here on the other side, it was a huge adjustment to adjust from being a physical human into a spiritual body and just embody all of that all at once like I went through an emotional purging that I don't, I can't even tell you how long it lasted but I swear to God it seemed like it was forever 
I didn't know if I was going to ever stop crying because the bliss here is just overwhelming when you come from the earth and you experience the duality and just to have bliss all the time mom you think that it would be something that a person would just crave and just love mm-hmm. it's insane yeah because you don't have anything that's going to go wrong like you're waiting almost for something to go wrong and nothing wrong ever <laughs> happens it gets frustrating yeah like you mean i'm not gonna get upset you mean i'm not gonna cry you mean no one's gonna hurt my feelings today <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know that's some shit that you know your mind it takes a lot to get a use, used to adjusting to I had to adjust and it wasn't easy I'm not gonna lie so the healing chambers that are in the Pleiadians book are those the healing chambers the same kind of chambers like what you would have had to gone through um, yes okay we all, we, we all have to go through... Okay, let me tell you how it is before you come to the earth. You want to know? Yeah. I got all of my memory back. So before you come to the earth, you go through what is called uh, the Star Nebula, where you get the mental swiping, and you're there with your guardian angels, your assigned, and they're going to be with you throughout your lifetime. Sometimes you switch off depending on your soul contracts. Well, even before you get to that part, there are like different chambers for each emotion. You have to learn fear. You have to learn grief, happiness, sadness, joy, etc. So you go through all of these chambers in order to experience the human emotions and then you're able to incarnate on earth. Well, the same thing is true when you finally ascend and you transcend to the higher realms. So you call it death there on the earth. We Mm -hmm. never call it death because it's not a death. It's just a rebirth. And in this rebirth, same thing. You know how you have to learn all of those things on the earthly plane before you incarnate? Well, you have to unlearn. Mm. (laughs) That's why I told you it was like a, um, a mental mind fuck. Like I had to unlearn sadness i had to unlearn anger i had to unlearn all of these things through these different chambers and so there are various different chambers on different dimensions just like in the hymn book Mm -hmm. and so you're moving in and out of all of these different dimensions and you're going through these healing healing chambers and you're there in your third body just like you are even when you are doing the healing chamber right there from the earth you're not in the body you're in your etheric body you're in your spirit Mm -hmm. And so you're going through all of these healing chambers until you finally get to that place where you're centered and you feel one with the universe and source. And then once you connect to the source, you're either able to go back to the source or you can move and just have different obligations and responsibilities of your choosing. And you are the one to get you are the one that gets to decide where you go. That's it's not cool. like how most people think. Yeah. What were you going to say, Mom? That That's really cool. Like, that's, um, you know, in the 3D space, and we you try to wrap your head around that. And um, that's the one thing that I wondered about. Like, do we all... I guess I get confused on the whole part, like... When we do all this work, do we all go back to source and become one? Or do we... But you just answered that. You answered that question. That Yeah, you have a choice if you want to go back to the source. But you have to really make sure that, you know, a person that's... You can't just go back to source. Right. Unless, unless you are fully enlightened. Mm-hmm. Unless you have truly transcended and mastered the earthly plane. Right. Then you can go back to source if you've mastered everything that there is to master. But mom, it takes many, many incarnations. Jesus is a perfect example of that. Mm -hmm. Jesus had many incarnations before he became Jesus. Jesus, he was Krishna, he was Buddha, he was Muhammad. And then lastly, he became the Christ. So what I'm saying to you is that it takes many incarnations and some of them are not earthly. Some of them are on other planets. Mm Mm-hmm. 
before you can really stand as sovereign being and be able to go back to the original source. Right. So it, it's, it's doable. A lot of people that have reached that level of enlightenment to free themselves from captivity in the body mm -hmm. journey back to the source. But once you get back there to the source and all there is, it's not like the freedom that you have away from source. I'm not saying that you're in prison, but I'm right. saying at the same time, you don't have the liberty. Like if I went back to source, I wouldn't have the liberty of speaking to you now. Right. I could get that. that would not be an option. Yeah. And that's another reason why I didn't go there because I had to honor my soul contract with you mm -hmm. to help you from this side. That makes sense. So uh, another question, and this is kind of to help people who are thinking in a 3D process. Um, what happens when, like, explain families. Like, um, you know how, like, in the 3D world, we're, we have families. Like, I have cousins and nieces and nephews and grandmas and grandpas. And, you know, when we're, when we're here on Earth... We say, oh, we can't wait to get back to heaven where we could be reunite with our entire family. Well, in my mind, I'm thinking maybe not everyone that I'm here with now, like in my family group, is who I'm supposed to reunite with in the other dimensions or in heaven, what 3D call heaven. Um, like, I know I'm going to reunite with Jake, but just to help the 3D mind wrap their, wrap, 3D, people in the 3D mindset wrap their mind around families, like families here on, in the 3D. Do, does that make sense? Yeah, I understand your question, Mom. <clears throat> First of all, you're spot on. Your family on the earth is not like the family that's here on the other ferment, okay? Mm -hmm. Which you will call heaven, paradise, new earth, etc. They're part of your soul monad group, which they they were. It's kind of like going to get a rental car, mom. That rental car is not yours. Mm -hmm. When your agreement for the amount of days, x amount of days that you agree to keep the car is over, you hand over the keys and you forget about it, right? Yeah. That's the same way it is with families, except those that have made packs and agreements here on this side of the veil to continue out throughout life cycles to still work together, which you're damn sure right about me and you. We will definitely see each other on the other side because we also have contracts here that are different than the soul contracts there on the earth. So we have life cycles still, even though you're not going to reincarnate back on the earth. I'm not going to reincarnate back on the earth, but we have other life cycles on other planets. We have other contracts that we're still working together. And it may not always be that I'm your son. I'm, I may be a father one lifetime. I may just be a friend. But the point is that the energy of me and the energy of you will still be intertwined and familiar with one another. Does that make sense? It does. So to just like with grandpa, with grandpa, grandpa is grandpa to me here. He's mm -hmm. nothing different because that's the way that we as souls mm -hmm. choose to identify each other. Okay. Uh, but it's not always that way with everyone else. It depends on how you choose to identify with one another. Does that make sense? It does. What about when, like me, for children and Max, you know, like, uh, will I always be connected to Max or does that depend on the contract? It depends on you and Max's contract. And I, I don't have a privilege or a right to access those records, but Dr. Tayan. She has the right to access those records, and she could tell you more about that. Okay. Because that goes into the Akashic records, which I, on this side, I 
can't tap into that. I, I don't have permission to tap into that. That's 3D stuff, even though it's multidimensional, if that makes right. sense. I'm in a whole different energy. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Um, yeah. So this goes back to kind of a question that um, that you answered, but I don't know that I totally understood it. And I'm, I'm thinking more along the lines to, of helping other people. Um, I wanted to see if you can help me explain to those in a 3D mindset, how does the shift, when we have the shift, how does it apply to people putting in the work in reference to their family members? Like, in other words, um, you have a wife who's putting in the work to do the shift into a higher dimension. Then you have a husband and maybe grown children or children that are duck or choose to stay in 3D and have no interest in shifting. When the shift happens, is that wife dead to the 3D people, like to the husband, the children, etc., that stay in the 3D? No. Well, I, I think I already touched on this. You did, but... I or was... entering... It's, it's okay, Mom. I don't mind going back to it because I, I know you need clarification. Okay. As far as I'm concerned, you are moving in and out of the third dimension into the fifth already. And you're not dead. Okay. How, however, however... I'm going to get deeper with you today. <laughs> yes, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> when that shift, that ultimate shift do come, your grown children, as much as you want to bring them there and take them there with you, if they don't make the shift themselves, whoever doesn't make that mental shift themselves, husband, children that are over the age of 18 or the age of accountability, will pretty much be left behind. Do you remember the Left Behind books, Mom? I did. I just, I never really read them just because I didn't want to, I, at the time, I didn't know what to believe and if it right. was worth it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it, 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 it damn sure is worth it. I mean, it's kind of like with anything, Mom, you take what you can assimilate and process and you leave what, doesn't really resonate if that makes sense yeah you take what you feel that's beneficial and you leave the rest okay in those books i can tell you what's inside them it's basically pretty much the same thing as the bible where two women will be working in the field one will look over and the other one is lifted up or you know the other one is taken away it would kind of happen like that but not like that in the 3d sense it will be uh, uplifting in consciousness that will uplift you in body. And it will happen. And it will take place. But not the way that your human mind mm -hmm. can take it and comprehend it at this moment. It's a spiritual phenomenon. And it's really hard to explain it. But I'm explaining it the best way that I can in human terms even though I'm not human anymore so you as wife you make the grand shift in the great awakening to your your consciousness as sovereign being and divinity within yourself and when that portal finally opens so you can transcend you will transcend and those that are not on that vibrational frequency and resonance will not go through that portal Okay, and they'll stay on the three day three D Earth. Correct. The the funny thing about this, the fun, yeah. or I guess I shouldn't say the funny thing, the the um, eye opening thing about this is yep. that the more I meditate, and the more I come into my higher self, or yeah. however you say that. Um, it doesn't yeah. worry me as much as it did when I was more in a 3D state. 
Exactly. And you know what? Mom, when you finally get there, it's not going to be like you're going to be missing them or they're going to miss you at all. Neither one of you. And this is the most loving thing that God's source could do for both parties. You won't miss each other because you won't be aware. Kind of like how most people are with us. And when I say us, I'm speaking of those that have transcended before you. Mm -hmm. And they consider us as being dead, which we're not. But, you know, they have no recollect when we're around. When, you know, we're around them, they don't know. Yeah, We know, but they don't know. And the only reason why we know is because we're using all of our conscious now. We're using our all of our minds. Instead of just 5%, we're, we're using 100% and we can be anywhere at any time. But we have to be also given passes, which means that we have to get permission. I already told you this, I think, the first time that you pulled me in. Yes, yes. We have to get permission from, you know, these lords. And I'll tell you about them on another time because um, of this, the sake of time that we have here. But anyway... We get we gotta get permission to be able to pass over to come here. We can't it's not like I can just at a moment's notice I'm gonna go visit mom. No, I have to get permission to be able to come in. And any spirit that interacts with a human, mm -hmm. they cannot interact without permission. Yeah, that makes because sense. Because there are cosmic yeah, there's cosmic laws, mom and there's universal laws that we can't violate. Going back to me saying that, the same with your government, your dark government, mm -hmm. or your shadow government. Let's just say that because dark sounds so low vibrational. Yeah. With the shadow government that is now in power, they cannot usurp your power or take it away. So you don't ever have to fear not being able to have a voice or not being able to stand up because a sovereign being, and that's the reason why I told you to do the declaration. That's part of the five steps too. You have to claim your sovereignty and your divinity for yourself because if not, unbeknownst to many, they will empower for the shadow government to do all of the heinous crimes that they're doing against humans. Wow. You have to disallow it by standing firm and saying that you have no parts of the cabal or the fear agenda, that you reside in love and light. And make sure that you write out your petition as soon as possible. Because that declaration and that decree has to be in place right now. Like, can you explain that a little bit more? So, like, is this yeah. something I write down to myself? I mean, to put it yeah, out there. You write, the you write it down, and the decree is not to yourself. The decree is to the shadow government. It's to the controllers, the dark controllers that is over the earth right now, okay. which is your shadow government. Uh -huh. But, Mom, remember I told you that there's two portions there's the physical government which is what you see represented by men mm -hmm. right yeah and the second portion remember i was talking about the demiurge the anunnakis yes that's the beings that you don't see which are here by the way they're here and when i say they're here they're here in the, er the earthly atmosphere okay so you write out that petition about you being sovereign being and you claim your divinity that you are a being of light and that you do not accept any fear, any microchipping, any vaccines or anything that promotes the dark agenda and that you stand in your sovereignty, a sovereign being in your own free will and that they are not allowed in your home, in your workspace, or any space that you occupy, or your family. You can write the whole decree to cover everyone, even Max and Dom. Okay. Them. 
Okay. And they will not be allowed to come near you. That is a simple decree. It doesn't have to be long drawn out. You just have to make sure you have that decree because they cannot violate decrees. And I just write that down. Do I say it? Um, say it out loud. And you only need to say it once. It's not something that you have to continuously repeat. Once you have said the decree, it is a seal that they cannot violate. Okay. So, you know how people say it seals the deal? Yes. <laughs> yes. It seals the deal yes. for you, Mom. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That really helps, and that's going to help a lot of people that listen um, understand how easy it is. But I, I think that they have to do it with intention. They can't just say the words. They need to say it with total intention that and, and understand and know that they are a light being, a being of light, and that they do stand in their own sovereignty, you know? Absolutely. And yeah, you're right. If you say light being, that's fine, because you guys are light beings, and you are 100% spot on. Intentions are everything, and they really, truly have to mean it. They have to really know that they are universally and cosmically protected. There are heart-centered beings that are already on the earthly plane that are ready to assist you at a moment's notice, but you have to be open to that communication. Yeah. You have to be open and willing for their help because, Mom, you cannot do this by yourself. This is not a physical war. This is a you know, bio war. Mm -hmm. And this is also a spiritual war, a psychological war. So they're basically wanting to do a uh, war on your mind. Yeah. Remember, I was talking about the soul reharvesting. They need that to power up their grid. This is the reason why, you know, when you see these people wearing a mask and the gloves and all of that, it only reinforces what is already there. Right. Didn't I tell you when I did the channeling for you two weeks ago, that it was going to be a peak in the COVID-19. Haven't you seen it? Yeah. Everything that I told you is, what is today? April the 21st in the, in the earth 2020, right? Yes. Everything that I have told you have come to pass. Yeah, it has. So this dark agenda and what they're pushing it's, it's, it's on purpose. It's to put you in fear so they can feed their gods that they work for. Mm -hmm. And these people that are dying of the COVID-19, yeah. they're going back on the reincarnation will. They're, they're harvesting their souls, their energy. They're using their energy. It's fear that's taken them. It's not the COVID-19 that's taken them out. It's the fear that's taken them out. Yeah. And even babies... Even these poor babies, their parents don't even realize that they impressed it upon their poor children's minds. And their babies had no fighting chance. Yeah. And that makes me sad, Mom. Yeah, it does. It really does. So they're not as powerful as the human race has given them the credit for. This could not happen if you, and when I say you, why are you, I'm talking about the masses, did not allow it to happen. So on an individual level, people allow fear to come in. And on a collective level, everyone started vibrating on that consciousness. And that is what has fueled this COVID-19 to be as big as it is. Yeah. Had had the world or humanity as a whole never gave it this much power, you would have never went on a lockdown. But like I said, this is God stuff. God knew better. Yeah, we this had was to. Needed. Yes. Yeah, mom it also gives you the opportunity to ascend. That's the whole point. Yes. Gives me a break to do what I need <laughs> to do. 
<laughs> Absolutely. So it all worked out and it always will. I always told you that everything is going to work out for the best. It's going to get better. Mm -hmm. It's going to get better before it gets worse, mom. Yeah. Trust I believe that. It. Trust it. I do. I definitely do. Yeah. It, what, yeah. My fear and my worry has been around like my family. Because, you know, you want to take them with you, but I also you have been working through this and, and that is what was revealed to me is that sometimes that'll come on its own and um, I just need to work on me, you know. I, yeah. I feel like if I'm in that other dimension or I'm with with Jake, you know, it's like Jake says, when you're in that dimension, you they he's still here, we just physically can't see him. Absolutely, Mom. And you know, it's like when you ride on the airplane, you put your safety mask on first. Uh-huh. And then you put the mask on the other person after you've gotten oxygen. That's how it works. You save yeah. yourself first. Yep. Put your autonomy together first. And then when you're fully empowered in enlightenment, in that vibration of just conscious awareness, mm -hmm. then you're able to do your part to influence you can only influence just like i influence you yeah. to channel me but i had no way even you know knowing things on this side whether you would have responded or not because of your free will mm -hmm. i'm just grateful that you did respond because that allowed me to honor our soul contract that allowed you to awaken yeah and that's all you can do when it comes to Max and the family, it's just influence. They still, at the end of the day, have their own free, free will and they are entitled to make their own decisions and choices. And you, in your unconditional love, have to allow them to make whatever decisions that they choose to make and just keep them in that unconditional love and that heart center because Love conquers all. It always does. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Woo. Good Absolutely. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Mom. Bye for now. It looks like your time. Bye. Yes. Time, in, time is almost up. Yes. Yep, it is. Okay. Thank you so all right, much. I love you. I love you, too. You're welcome, Mom. All right. I asked that. You received back, Jake. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your knowledge. Oh, my God. You always just give us a wealth of knowledge. I can't even fathom in words and thoughts how to even begin to thank you for the plethora of information that you give us here on this earthly plane. Thank you so much. Yes, thank All you. All right, Amanda. Holy <laughs> smokes. That's so good. <laughs> yeah. Wow. He's amazing. He's yeah. a, a, a amazing being. And I didn't know that he was messing with your coworker. <laughs> yes. She was just telling me this yesterday. And she's like, oh she says he'll come up behind her and she'll do this because he'll be playing with, you know, like messing with her hair or doing something. And she's like, quit it. <laughs> oh, my God. So, yeah. That little stinker. Yeah. He was like, I love messing with her. <laughs> yeah. I think she likes it, but then she just like, she doesn't know how to take it because she's not in the yeah. same space yet. But um, yeah. she's just. It, she doesn't know how to um, channel her energy and mm -hmm. direct it. Mm -hmm. And that's what yeah. Jake was speaking of. He was like, she's open. I love that. I love when they're open like yeah. that. But yeah. And I'm like. I'm like, what the heck? I'm doing all this stuff. Why can't I see him? Why can't I see all these people? <laughs> but I realize that, you know, she's seeing all these people. Um, she's seeing good, the good and the shadow the people or whatever it is. So it's yeah. malevolent and malevolent. Correct. And that yeah. malevolent is good. Malevolent. I'm, I mean, I'm saying that really from a... Yeah. Like, a, a, a hick sound, but <laughs> benevolent. Yeah, benevolent ben and malevolent. Like mal, like mal malicious. Malicious. Malevolent. Oh, okay, that makes more sense. Yeah. All right. Malicious, yeah. malevolent. Okay. 
Yeah, yeah. That's well, so I cool. enjoyed our time like always. Yeah. I'm looking forward for the next one because I want to see what Jake has I to know. say. And it's so cool to see all of these things transpire. Yes. And the, here's the sad thing, though. By the time I get a chance to upload this shit, then that already happened. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I'm like, oh, my God, I can't keep up. <laughs> I know. But it's kind of cool and, to look back and see what's happened. And, mm -hmm. and so people will and, know. Um, and what I'm very excited about, I, you know, I didn't start this in the beginning to, um, for anyone else but myself, but now that I know that you put this on your channel, all the yeah. people that were reaching and helping and helping open their yeah. mind, it's amazing. Yeah. And like people I know, I ran into my sister-in-law yesterday and I'm like... I've been channeling Jake, you know, and I never know how people are going to take that. Not me personally, but, right. uh, and I right. share, I share your channel with, with them. And so yeah. that's really cool because I, I don't, I don't know. I just feel like we can help people out that way. And I'm very Absolutely. excited about that's it. what we're here for. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're definitely in our divine mission, Amanda. That's for sure. Both yeah. of us. Yeah. 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 Is, I, right. I want to help as many people as I can, but I also know I need to help myself. So, right, yeah. exactly. It's like you want to dive deep, you want to swim in those deep waters, and yeah. that's how it is. It's because of where you are, it's your compassion, yeah, and it's your willing to help people. You just want to go all in. But I do. Then you're like, oh, we got to take these baby steps, but you're like, but I don't want to take I the know. baby steps. I want to buy this. And I should know just this. Like you were yeah, I should know this from like the past that. Uh, sometimes yes. when I help people, I go a hundred percent and then I forget to help myself. And I think that exactly. that's where I need to, I'm learning a lesson here. I really am. Yeah. So. Yeah, really, absolutely. But, well, take care. Thank yeah, you so much. You and I look forward to the next time. Okay. Lo I love you so much. I love and you I miss too, Amanda. You. <laughs> I miss you okay. every time I hang up. <laughs> I know. Um, we'll have our soon enough. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> right. Bye. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.